Hey everybody, we're going to dive into Horseshoe Indianapolis on Wednesday. We have a 10, 10 race card, but the card is only 9 races for Thoroughbreds. The final race is a quarter horse race. So we're going to dive into the first race here. Uh, typically I give out a top 3 selections. Top selection I recommend playing is a win in place. Uh, top 3 Exactas and trifectas. Honestly, play it however you typically play. We'll be putting out a pick four video as well for the late pick four, which will throw you off a bit. It starts in race six and goes through race nine. I think there's a single in the uh, first leg, but uh, look for that video. We're going to dive right in, though, to Horseshoe Indianapolis race one. Horseshoe Indianapolis race one, mile on the main track, maiden claiming. It's pretty formful here. I feel as though the the seven has all the early speed. Uh, the two, I think, will come and pick up some pieces, but the seven's going to be super, super tough to beat. I can't find a way to beat it. The seven is going to be our top selection. No joking matter. The two, Liz Idino, or well, Liz said no. Wow. And the four has some middle speed here. I think we'll hang on for a piece. The four, Seminal Midnight is our third selection. Pretty formful opener here at Horseshoe Indianapolis, race one, seven, two, and four. Horseshoe Indianapolis, race two. It's actually a baby race for Phillies, two-year-olds, uh, five furlongs on the main track, maiden special weight. No form here. Really can't look into the speed figures. Our top selection our top three are one, two, and six. Our top selection being the one. The one April Clover uh, is a Matoli uh, as the sire. Steve Asmussen was the trainer of Matoli, so he's got this filly in his in his barn. April Clover, Jose or Joseph Ramos uh, aboard. Joseph Ramos, 20% winners in the last 10 days alone, and with two-year-olds. Steve is a 14% winner. Second time starter, though. This horse finished fifth with Ricardo Santana Jr. aboard back at Churchill Downs uh, on the 11th. But coming in, uh, I think that that race was just to get some form, get, get some experience, some race experience to win a race like this. Break gets made early and start moving up the class ladder, get into some stakes company, maybe even run at Saratoga. Uh, that's just me inferring and gossiping a little bit with this horse. Steve had a hell of a, a day on Memorial Day, I believe Sunday or Monday, with two maiden uh, horses that just blew the blew the doors off uh, of the field. So I think this horse also is going to blow the doors off of this field. Early speed, um, second time starter for Steve, got early speed. So this one is going to be Really, really tough to beat. April Clover is our top selection. The two underneath we like. First time starter. Had a decent gate workout recently. Positive numbers on the ROI figures for Oscar Performance, the Sire, as well as uh, the damn Hey There Cupcake out of prized. Uh, decent gate work, though. Gets this horse in our top three. And then first time starter for John Ortiz um, with the jock, McKenna Anderson. John is 33%, and first-time starters 19%, all with positive ROI. And I think this first-time first time starter out of Classic Empire will be a uh, one to hit the board. Those are the top three in my in the field here. April Clover is going to be impossible to beat. I feel uh, if it happens, it happens. But Steve's been running pretty well, especially with especially with these young horses. One, two, and six though. April Clover, our top selection. Once again, race two in the baby race at Horseshoe on Wednesday. One, two, and six. Horseshoe Indianapolis, race three. Six furlong claiming on the main track. The six and the two have a ton of early speed here. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of the, the one. Uh, I don't really see how the one wins this race. The horse I'm going to take on top is second off of a layoff. It is the four exchange or second exchange i just think we'll we'll be able to run down uh and either give the the six a run for the money here uh pressing off the pace at the second uh call going into the stretch uh hopefully blow on by with these late spe uh, speed numbers i see the six though uh, we'll be running on the front end morning line favorite dalton's love and i like the two uh with this early speed to also hang on a bit i don't see how this one uh really does anything here um that 
you know, race lens sees. So our top selection is going to be uh, a little bit more of a long shot in this field. The 9-2 to two morning line choice um, and odd second exchange is our top selection. The 6, Dalton's Love, and the 2, Happy Sales around that are top. Actually, not the 2. The 3, Splash of Tonic. Uh, we'll, we'll close into it, as you can see here. Press the 2 and the 1. Move past them. Our top 3 selections my apologies are the four, six, and three. Once again, top selection, the four second exchange, Dalton's Love, and then Splash of Tonic. Four, six, and three in race three. Horseshoe Indianapolis, race four, starter allowance, six furlongs on the main track on Wednesday. The five, Finestra has the earliest speed here in the field. Uh, the horse I like uh, that I think will sit off the pace a bit, make a move, blow the... Blow right on by the five and the six is going to be this three, Lord Barna. Uh, winner last out, getting Orlando Mojica aboard. I'm going to jump over to the PPs here in race lens real quick so you can take a peek at that. Uh, one at Tampa last out at seven furlongs, cutting back a little bit. Uh, actually, sorry, Mar Marcelino Pedroza aboard. Uh, Marcelino Pedroza, 21% uh, winners the last 10 days. Bullet workout as well, one of two here, Indy Grand, Horseshoe Indianapolis. Uh, but one by five and three quarters lengths last out. I think the three with that pace scenario and tons of speed will run run for fun here. Uh, morning line five or sorry nine to two. The six I think will uh, pass the five. The five I think just has um, way too early speed and you're going to tire out on the front end. The six metallic man four to one and the five. Finestra to round out our top three. I think the two is super vulnerable to world. So our top four, or sorry, top three selections in race four, three, six, and five. Horseshoe Indianapolis, race five, mile claiming on the turf on Wednesday. Ten horse field. I think the, the pace is here to blow up a bit. I think there's going to be a middle move, uh, some late runners on the turf. I love the turf here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Tons of value in the sequences, pick fours and pick fives. Um, I do think the three and nine will be coming late, but uh, we're going to take four horses here. The two, six, three, and ten, the two our top selection is uh, a Kitten's Joy runner here in race five. The two, Mom's Moon, Kitten's Joy out of a Consolidator uh, mare. The, the mayor sweet essay or sweet essay, uh, 60% in the money, 161% ROI, four horses uh, out of her. George Arnold, second off of a layoff here, and is dropping down from allowance company to get a win. And is coming, uh, actually already ran to Indy Grand here and got mixed up a bit. Moved backward. So I think the class relief, Jack Gilligan riding for George Arnold. Uh, should be able to hold on the pace. Uh, has been typically running on the front end. So if I think if it can hold back a bit, Mom's Moon. Mom's Moon will be winning this race at a morning line of 9-2. to two. Who we like underneath is going to be the 6-3 and 10. The 6 is the early speed. Silent Sonata, uh, I think, will hold on for a piece. The 3, Coal Miner's Kitten. Uh, also, I believe, out of a Kitten's Joy. Here are the 3. Kitten's Joy out of a Johannesburg uh, mare. The three, uh, been laid off for about a month or so. Ran at Keeneland and getting Santo Sanjor aboard, uh, who does pretty well on the turf here. Morning line is 12 to 1 on this three. And then we're also looking at the 10. The 10, Moon Mischief into Mischief out of a Dixie Union mare. Coming off of a layoff since March. Um... Looking at Emmanuel Esquivel aboard, 21%, 17% on the surface, and a positive ROI on Sister Moon, 92% positive ROI, 1550 median win dollars. So that's good to wrap out the top four here. Our top four selections again: the two, uh, Mom's Moon on top, the three, or sorry, the six. Uh, early speed is going to hold on. Silence and out of the three and ten will be running late. The three coal miners kitten and the not or sorry ten moon mischief are top four selections again two six three and ten.
Horseshoe Indianapolis race six, maiden special weight, six furlongs for Indy Breads on the main track. The horse is going to be absolutely impossible to beat, I think, on this card, other than that Steve Asmussen uh, first time, or sorry, second time starter in the maiden special race is going to be in this state bred race. This is going to be the single we're using in the pick four. Uh, watch the pick four video, but this is the single I'm talking about. Girls are tougher, uh, has all the early speed, all the late speed. Morning line is three to one. I think it's going to go off at like six to five, though. Uh, if we if it doesn't go off shorter, uh, is the speed of the race it going to be impossible to beat? We're going to use the ten underneath as well. Unbridled divine and the eight. I'll jump into Y. Third off of a layoff for this horse. Uh, pressed and then just kind of uh, died off a bit in a stakes race. Dropping in class, dropping back down the maiden special uh, state breads to break that maiden. The ten. Second time starter, had a bullet workout here at Indy, uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis, one of eight on the 22nd, positive ROI for Prophecy the Dam out of Pulpit, and the eight, we're looking at a second time starter, second time Lasix for this horse, um, just ran comfortably, didn't really, wasn't really asked to do much, uh, just kind of get run, get, get some run into him, uh, or into her, uh, so Forever Bless is going to round out our top three in this race. Our top three selections, just to get us to the next leg as well, uh, where we're going to take a, a couple horses in the turf race, which is the next race. One, our best bet, other than the Steve Asmussen for the day, the one, Girls Are Tougher, 10, Unbridled Divine, and the eight, Running in the Mix, two, Forever Blessed. Top three here in our sheet, one, 10, and eight, in race six at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Horseshoe Indianapolis, race seven. We're going to go with four horses just in case there are some scratches on the turf. It's a mile and a 16th turf allowance event. Uh, 12 horses in the field. The early speed, I think, is the horse that's going to hold on uh, to win this race just because I don't see how anyone else kind of makes a move to beat this two who has just so much early speed. I think it'll walk the dog on the front end. The two is going to be our top selection, Helen's Well. And when you jump over, it's second off of a layoff here at Indy Grand, Horseshoe Indianapolis, uh, on Wednesday. Helen's Well also has won, uh, has run at this distance once, uh, switching barns, going to Eric Reed, but Gerardo Corrales is coming back aboard, uh, riding for the, the two here. 32% in the last 10 days, positive ROI, 75% positive ROI, and multiple bullet workouts. Uh, second off of a layoff, this last bullet, though, was one of four uh, on the 22nd. To round out our top four selections, though, 12, 7, and 5 underneath, we're going to go with the 12. Goodbye, Kyle, who... Uh, when we jump over to the past performances for this horse in race lens. The 12, goodbye Kyle, second off of a layoff, uh, going blinkers on the summer front uh, Philly for Kenny McPeak, Joe Talmo aboard. Uh, first time turf for Kenny McPeak, positive ROI, 36%. 17% first time turf, blinkers on. Um, as well as sprint to route, running in a mile and a 16th. We have a 17% win percentage for Kenny McPeak and 19% going from dirt to turf. And actually, this is a uh, sprint-sprint route uh, angle for me as well because they ran in two sprints and then running long on the turf. Morning line 15 to 1 is why I like this horse. Then we're going to look at the 7 Jenny Lind has uh, tons of late speed, ran, uh, was passing some horses here uh, at Churchill on the 12th. Um, what else do we have here? It's going to be the late speed, as you can see. Going to be running down the front end horse, I think, running into Helen's Well a bit. And the 5 is our fourth horse, the 5, Habuya. Uh, Jimmy Creed out of a Tis Wonderful Mare, second off of a layoff. Uh, with Edgar Morales, came from about 12 lengths back and hit the board uh, on the 10th. It has a positive ROI, 80% in the money for Aaron Angel, the dam of the five, 94% ROI, almost a $10 win 
uh, dollars on this horse, on this dam's uh, progeny. Edgar Morales, 27% winners and a positive ROI as well. Four for four on the turf, though, here at Indy Grand uh, in the money. So, top selection, once again, is going to be the two, Helen's Well. But a uh, couple horses in the mix here. The 12, Goodbye Kyle. Seven, Jenny Lind. And the five, Habuya. Top selection, though, four to one morning line. Helen's Well, 12, seven, and five. Once again, race seven, two, 12, seven, five. Pretty formful rest of the card. Race 8, looking at race 8, back-to-back uh, -back turf races here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Another allowance, a mile event on the turf for Indy Breads. Uh, the 7 just has all the speed in this race. Uh, when we're looking at the 7, Jack Summer uh, is going to sit off the pace off the front end, press the 4 a bit, and just roll on by uh, Band of Roses, who's just a long shot. It's going to be uh, the rabbit on the front end in this race. 5-2 uh, to two morning line is going to be tough to beat here. Jack Summer is our top selection. The 11, uh, Pantalones in Fuego, uh, also running late. And the 4, I think, will hold on for a piece of it in the mix. The so 1's going to be running late. I don't think we'll win. And the 4, Band of Roses, is going to round out our top three selections on this turf event. Race 8 on Wednesday at Horseshoe Indianapolis. 7, 11, and 4 is our top three. Our top selection, though, Jack Summer. Horseshoe Indianapolis, Race 9. It's the finale for the Thoroughbred card. Maiden claiming, 6 furlongs, 4 Indiana bred uh, horses here. 1, 3, and 8 have all the class in this race. Uh, I don't see how any of these other horses kind of run in at all. The 5-2 to two morning line, Dabney, will be the horse to beat. Has all the pace, all the class. Second off of a layoff for this 8 here uh, at Horseshoe Indianapolis in the state bred race. The 3 and the 1 will also be uh, coming underneath. I think the 3 does have the early speed. We'll make a middle move for Queen D at uh, morning line of 10-1. to one. I mean, I want to try to beat this 5 uh Sequeaker, um, who doesn't really have much to write home about. Ama NH Lady Cat is going to be our other long shot to kind of mix up the exactas and tries here. Uh, we'll run late and press the pace. Hopefully press this eight a little bit. And we need some uh, long shots here in the final race alongside this favorite to round out our pick four watch that video as well but that's going to be the formful finale for us here uh eight is going to be our top selection dabney the three queen d and the one i'm um, nh lady cat uh that wraps out our card here uh the ninth race at horseshoe indianapolis thanks for watching follow us on twitter at thoroughstat follow us on youtube subscribe smash the like button on this video uh for updates uh from Pick four previews, full card analysis, and some live streaming events we'll do in the summertime. Thanks again. My name's Dave, the creator of Thurstat. Good luck here at Horseshoe on Wednesday. And watch our pick four card uh, so we can single this one in race six. Good luck, though. And uh, let's cash some tickets.